What is going on, guys? Are we recording back? And it is almost NBA season. We are here to give you some of the hottest takes on the internet. I'm here, as always, with the young Rottweiler, Ethan Hamilton. Oh, oh. And today, our guest, ball knower, Mr. Jason Collins, joining us. You feel me? <laughs> and I'm 007 Gage Sutton. Thank you for joining the pod. Uh, before we get started, make sure that you subscribe, like, do all that good stuff. Follow us on the socials. They'll be posted down in the description below. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into the hot takes, guys, because uh, I think we've got some pretty spicy ones that might get the internet a little riled up. Uh, Ethan, should we start spicy off the rip or should we like warm up a little bit? Hey, Jason's our guest, man. Do, do you want to open it up? And maybe maybe we could decide oh, off of your first hot I'm, take. I'm, I'm going to open it up, man. This is going to be a very polarizing take, especially okay. with Miss, Mr. Hamilton. Oh, my gosh. I already know what it's going to be. I already know what it's going to be. Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole averaged 25 points per game this season. Oh. Again, Washington has nobody. It's going to be him and the cool show. Plus, in 26 games last year, he averaged 26 points without Steph. That's a pretty decent sample size for me. And like I said, they have nobody. It's, it's going to be a pool party all season in Washington. So it's going to, I see him averaging 25 a night for sure. I'm not mad at that take. I don't know about you, E. I know, I know he was kind of I have a dis- I have a, di- I have a disdain <laughs> for Jordan Poole. Uh, so, but I'm not mad at it. Like, it's, like you said, it's literally him and Kuz. And both of them two are shot chuckers supreme. So I they're gonna get their shot up regardless. And my thing is I'm gonna go a little hotter. I can see him being an all-star in the East. Ooh. That, that, that's that's yeah, that's real hot. hot. That's real hot. I can see him being an all-star. Mobile did leave. I can see it. If, yeah, if, I like Washington, that. if Washington plays at least decent and he gets you 26, 27 at a game by halftime of, of the season, I can see him being an all-star reserve. I can see that too because the East is kind of thin when it comes to guards. Because you got to think That's about it, saying. this time yeah. last year, Kyrie and Kyrie and Bradley Beal aren't going to be there because they went to the West. So, I guess like I said, it's, it's, it's going to be a pool party all season in Washington, and you're going to see. I got faith in Jordan Poole. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I, hey, I guess. Uh, Ethan, actually, can I can I go? I've got one about another point guard that uh, I think you have a little bit of disdain for. Oh my God! You guys are just targeting me with these no, no. With these hot takes. <laughs> hey, I, I didn't mean to start it off with this one, but Jason mentioned Jordan Poole. I'm gonna go with this one. I think De'Aaron Fox will be named as the point guard for the first team All NBA at the end of the season. I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm with you. I'm with I'm you. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. But I think because I'm I'm with you. I think the Kings are gonna get a high regular season seed because they're just a regular season team. That's what they are. But first team movie, I don't know about it, because he's going to have to beat guys like Steph and Luca. At the very least, them two. One of them two, he's going to have to beat out. But that's what I'm saying. I I don't think he's going to get first team because I don't think the Kings have the regular season they have like they did last year. They are a regular, okay. season, regular season team, but I don't think I don't see them being a three seed this year. Gage, why do you why do you think De'Aaron's going to get that uh, the first team All NBA? Well, the thing for me is I've always been a big De'Aaron fan. I think he's a really good player on both sides of the ball. Uh, And honestly, I think for me, the biggest thing is going to be his availability. He's always done a really great job of being on the court. Uh, He doesn't miss a lot of games. And like Jason said, they were the third seed last year in the West. Me personally, I think they can keep up that pace. I think they are more of a regular season team. We need to see what they can do in the playoffs, but Their team basically stayed unchanged from last year, and De'Aaron Fox is only going to get more comfortable with the guys around him. So give me the thumbs up on De'Aaron Fox. I I really do see his stock going up. And uh, that first team All-NBA roster may be a little bit of a stretch, but I could see it from a guy like him. Actually, thinking about it, I don't think it's that much of a stretch anymore because like, like, they have to play 65 games to be eligible for All-NBA. We don't know who's going to get hurt during the season. Like I said, Steph Curry, he he liable to to miss 10, 15 games off the rip for something. Luca Luca's pretty reliable, I think. Luca mm-hmm. plays, Luca plays. So I I could it's not a stretch no more. I, he could he can get first team all NBA. So I, I was kind of taking that into consideration yeah. that like they yeah, added these new NBA. they added these new uh rules like Jason said, 65 games to be considered for all NBA and I think that goes for all of the regular season awards too. You yep. Can, only be in the MVP conversation, the six man conversation if you played sixty five or more games. So uh that's gonna cut out a lot of people. 
and uh i guess we'll kind of see who who else it affects but ethan yeah you got your next well take, man? i like how y'all were really positive you guys are bigging up players like jordan pool and deer and fox I don't like that. I gotta go the opposite direction. I, we need more hate on this broadcast. But instead of just going for one individual, I'm gonna go for all team. For me, I think the Memphis Grizzlies are gonna miss the playoffs this year. Ooh. With Ja missing 25 games, Stephen Adams, we don't know the certainty of his injury. Brandon Clark with his Achilles. That, that that's very hot then, because uh, like I said, Ja's out for 25 games. Stephen Adams is a big piece, but hey. We're Dang. also forgetting they got Marcus Smart this offseason, too, who I think Dang. is an upgrade over Dylan Brooks. He's a terrorist, though. <laughs> he doesn't have any problems. Like, they're, they're starting five when Ja comes back. It's probably going to be Ja, Jaron Jackson, Steven Adams, Marcus Smart, and who would be the, the two in that lineup? Derek. Derek who? Rose. Derek Rose Derek not Rose? getting any minutes in 2023. <laughs> He's coming Jer- off the bench. <laughs> Derek Rose, uh, what's it called? Is going to get minutes? I think at least for the first half of the season with Ja out. Oh, I'm, t- I'm talking about as like stars when, when Ja oh. comes back. Well, honestly, like, I-, I could see a lineup of Ja, Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain. I forgot Jackson. Desmond Bain. Yeah. 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 So, nah, they'll, they'll be a flaw. That, that's, that's a very hot take. They still got Desmond Bain. They still got Jaron Jackson. They still got Smart. There's yeah, they'll they'll be comfortable with, within 25 games before they miss Ja. Well, regardless, I still think they're gonna miss the playoffs. Ja 25 games. Brandon Clark's gonna with his Achilles. Already Jaron Jackson. He is on the injury. He just wasn't two, three months. I gassed the fuck out of that. But <laughs> I do think they're gonna miss the playoffs. That's hot. That's a very hot take. I gotta. I, I need to find some way to move my Maverick to the uh, ranking. So somebody's gotta come down. <laughs> yeah, they stink. I guess it's. Uh, I guess it's my turn then, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Here we go with another one. Anthony Davis will be a top five player this year. Oh man, he's a he is a walking twenty six and twelve with all NBA defense, and I feel like he's gonna be healthy. I know it's a very polarizing topic with him being healthy. He's gonna be healthy this season. I'm I'm trusting him to be healthy this season. Like I said, he's a walking 26 and 12 with all NBA defense. He well, I'm, I'm gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Defensive player of the year. <laughs> it's it's in the makings for him. You were you were, you were trying to put that guarantee stamp on it. <laughs> well, I, I was I was gonna say something crazy, but I'm I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna hold that. Well, so this is this is actually perfect because the last topic or the last uh take you had involved us talking about the 65 games. Yeah. And this is one that Anthony Davis like is going to have to pay attention to, because if he wants those incentives to make the all star team to win defensive player of the year, he's going to have to stay healthy. He's going to have to be on the court. And Jason, honestly, I'm not mad at it because when he is on the court, he is one of the best basketball players in the NBA. Dominant. It's, it's simple like, as that. I, I see him. I see him playing 65 games this year. I see him playing it. See, I think that could be the hot take alone. You just see Anthony Davis playing more than 65 games. <laughs> he's going to play 65. That, that's, well, <laughs> he's going to play 65 games. Like I said, he's going to be a top five player this season. That's, that's I, my hot take. I'm not mad at it because I have high expectations for the Lakers with what they did in the offseason. They were basically able to keep everybody. Um, even though I still think I got to see it to believe it with them in particular, and especially with Anthony Davis and LeBron, but I'm not mad at you for saying that. Heard you. Yeah, I kind of like it, man. I'm interested to see it. I'm interested too. I kind of like what the Lakers did this offseason. So I'm just interested to see how they mesh with the new pieces they added. And uh, hopefully AD can stay healthy because he just got to stay healthy, man. The Lakers are a much better, more fun team to watch when he's healthy. We're going to come back to this video. I'm going to get something enough way hotter. If he can can play them 65 games, it's going to be something way hotter with Anthony Davis. Yeah. I'm mad at it. Okay, so I'm not sure which one to go with. I think I'm going to follow the trail of Jason again and go with one for a big man. Um, He's a guy who, in my opinion, he soft his baby shit. And I'm <laughs> talking about Carl's, Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, my hot take is he will not be a Timberwolf by the trade deadline. That they will I move like on that. from him. And uh, they committed a lot of money to Rudy Gobert. 
and they're not going to give up on him that easily. If anything, they're going to try to trade Cataway and see what they can do to build around Anthony Edwards, who I think has established himself as the main building block of that organization. So uh, we could see Cat on a different team this season, and I think it'll happen before the trade deadline. That's honestly crazy because that leads. That's literally a perfect segue to my second one. I think Carl Anthony Towns by the end of the year he will be an Atlanta Hawk. Oh, I see him and Trey Young teaming up because I think Atlanta is in a very similar situation from the aspect of like they have Trey Young, but now the John Collins, the John Collins and Trey Young experiment didn't work. They have to they have to find a way to get either a second star to Atlanta or get rid of Trey Young, and I don't think they're ready to get rid of Trey Young. Uh-oh. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> it's not going to be DeJounte Murray. I don't know how to break it to you. Uh, DeJounte Murray, I don't know. He's going to be the one to seal the deal. But I do think Carl Anthony Towns will be an Atlanta Hawk by the end of the year. Hey, I'm, I'm not mad at that, man. Because like I said, uh, like like Gage just said, it's clear. That's Anthony Edwards' team now. Cat, Cat is, he's going he's gonna to get you 23-24. But he's not, he's not him. Like, like he's soft. He's soft. I that I don't I don't even think that's a hot take. I I feel like he's gonna be gone too. Like I could very well see that coming. And I think he's gonna operate more in like a I think he's gotta be the second best player or the third best player on a team that can with a team the identity that can hold him responsible defensively. You know what I'm saying? As, and, as a second best player, they they gonna need a lot of like very great role players for him to be the second best player, if you get what I'm saying. Like that team would have to be constructed perfectly. <clears throat> Hey, and DeJounte isn't a bad third option for that team, but exactly. you're right. Like, Cat would have to be the legit number two guy on that team. He'd have to be tough on defense. Not to say that he hasn't had stretches where he looks like that, but he does have those stretches where we're calling him soft as baby shit for a reason. There, there are times where he just doesn't look engaged on defense. He's getting backed up by smaller guys. So I'm just – settles. He settles yeah. a lot, man. Exactly. So like, I get it. I get it. He can shoot the ball, but he settles for that three ball a lot. When I watch, especially that in the playoffs. Series, oh my god! When I watch that playoff series, he settles for jumpers a lot for a seven footer. Man, get your ass on the block. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. The offense will be lethal with with Trey Young and Kat, Carl Anthony Towns. Not sure about the defense, but at least we know the yeah. offense would be pretty. You, you know, you know, you know what you're getting out of Trey Young. Twenty five and ten at least. Yeah. Defense. Yeah. But you're getting 25 and 10 on, on one end. <laughs> he may give up 25, but he but he's gonna give you 25 and 10 on the other end. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, honestly, Jason, what's your next hot state? What you got? This may be the hottest. It's our last one, so Jason Tatum will win MVP to Ooh. I'm not bro. That's literally that's literally on my fucking notes. It's literally there. Uh oh, all right. Tatum will win MVP this season. I think they finally get over the hump. And like I said, Tatum, he plays, he plays his games. So I think he'll get the 65 game mark. I don't think he'll be the best player this season, but I think with that 65 game mark, he's gonna creep into that conversation because not many people play 65 games. And like I said, he, he's gonna get you what 27, 28 with like six and seven or six and five. And Boston's always going to be a top three seed in, in the East. I could very well see him win an MVP this season. I am not mad at that take. I think, honestly, everything you said, I agree with, Jason. I think the Celtics are going to be very good. They added Drew Holiday, who I think is a big upgrade at what they had on, at the point guard position last year. He's going to bring a lot of defensive uh, versatility and allow Jason Tatum to kind of take the reins on the offensive side of the ball. Is uh, You've also got Jalen Brown, who can't dribble with his left. Um, they added Kristaps Porzingis this off season, so uh, it's Celtics all about health through. with them. Yeah, I think it's like I think Porzingis is going to be especially helpful come playoff time with that closing lineup. I mean, talking about Tatum, Brown, True, Porzingis, and who would run the three or the two? You'd think you got you got JB Tatum, Drew Holiday, Kristaps, and Horford. We'll be yeah, the five. That's a really good closing lineup. My thing is all those guys, not all those guys, but like guys like Porzingis, Horford, I think they have question marks when it comes to health. Yeah. Even so Drew, I don't know. Even Drew's getting a little up there in age. Um, he yeah. wasn't healthy all of last season. Um, and if that is the case, I think that helps Jason's take that if those guys are hurt, Jason Tatum's going to have to take a lot of that weight on his back. 
and we can see him have an MVP caliber season. So, and and you got to think though, like the last two three seasons, it's been a three man race for MVP: Embiid, Giannis, Jokic. I feel like voter fatigue is real. Like people get tired of voting for the same people. I can see them being like, okay, him or Luca. Well, I don't think Luca's team is gonna be good enough to to win MVP, but mm-hmm. I feel like they're gonna want a new person in those in the top of those votes. And Tatum is next in line. If, if you ask me, Tatum's next in line. I can see that. I, I, I think there's another there's another name, and when we get when we come around, I'll see if I have the the cojones to say that name. But Gage, what you got next? All right, you guys know I'm a massive diehard Spurs fan. So my last take had to be about the Spurs. And it's actually, I feel like it's pretty tame. Um, And I think it's going to catch a lot of Spurs fans off guard. I think Wemby is going to disappoint in the eyes of a lot of NBA fans. He's not going to put up flashy numbers. He might not average more than 18 points a game. Um, But I think he's going to help elevate the overall team play of the Spurs. And they will be a play-in team at the end of the season. I'm not mad at that. I, I could see with the expectations of him, of course, people are probably going to come in expecting an average 20 and 10. Me, I see 16 and 8 with generational defense. That, that's what I see from, from Wimby. And like you said, a rim protector saves a lot of mess that people don't see. People don't understand how big a rim protector is. And with that defensive um, upside, upside, like I could see them being a playing team. I don't it's yeah and that's why it's in a hot take it's a hot take for a reason but I can um, see it I can definitely see it though I can see it I mean I'm glad Ethan, you're optimistic about your team Gage <laughs> Ethan <laughs> I, I know I'm, I'm sure we'll have plenty of episodes where we're talking about Luke and the Mavericks but you, you had a chance to watch a lot of Spurs games last season and I, I kind of just want to get your take too on like the roster around them because I feel really confident in that defense uh in that defensive lineup of Vassell Keldon Jeremy um and just the other pieces surrounding that I think they're going to be able to switch on a lot. They're going to be able to um, just, you know, keep uh, keep offenses from blowing up in games. And even though their offense might take a little while to develop through Wemby, they're going to put – Pop's going to do the things to put him in the right position to make plays. Uh, I'm not mad at it. I think – I don't think Wemby's going to be that – play that many games this year. I think that 62, what is it, 62, 65 game mark, 65. you have to get for a war consideration. I don't think he's going to get there. I think Pop and the Spurs organization is going to be really cautiously optimistic with him. Like, yeah, he's going to have great games in Spurs, but coming from Europe and playing a bunch of games that he did play last year, like he was playing games up until the draft. Like, I think they're going to want to, at least the first season or two, they're going to want to slow the roll with him with him being the size and them looking at OKC, for example, what happened with Chet, you know, even though it was a freak accident in uh, the, uh, what was it? The Drew league. Yeah. Um, I think they're going to like use that as like, okay, cool. Like we know he's going to play, but he might not play back to backs. He might not play, especially on the road. Like we're going to try to save him because they want him to have a long career and they can't have him getting this hurt early when there's no really incentive for the Spurs to win this year. See, I don't think that's their mindset. I think I think they're gonna play it by eye. They're gonna see how he's looking. They're gonna play him in a back to back. They're gonna see how he's looking in those and be like, okay. They're gonna evaluate him off those back to backs. Like, okay, is he playing well? Does he look fatigued? Does he look tired? Does he look like he's gonna get hurt? I think that's how that's how they'll play it. And honestly, as a Spurs fan who you know keeps up with all of the beats, I was at the scrimmage. <clears throat> Wemby put on 10 pounds of weight and muscle. And um, you can tell he looks good. He says that he's felt better in his body at the start of this season than he has ever before. So I think there is a lot of optimism, but I think Jason's right. It's ultimately going to come down to how Pop feels, how the organization feels he's looking after games. And uh, they'll ultimately decide how many games he plays. Um, But I think there's no doubt he is going to be a huge upgrade defensively for this team. And I'm just excited to see uh, the impact he can bring on winning basketball. But, Ethan, your next hot take, man? I mean, last year I kind of stepped it out the park by saying the Kings were going to make the playoff. I didn't think they were going to be a top seed. Take credit for it. Um, I do think in the West, though, it's going to be really, really hard this season because everybody's coming back healthy. And there are going to be injuries, of course, that we're not going to see coming. But assuming they're all healthy, I think another young team 
is definitely going to take the leap. I know what a lot of people are going to be thinking. OKC, they're going to have Chet back. They're going to have Shea, another year of Shea. And apparently he's a top nine, a top 10 player in the NBA, according to ESPN. But I'm going to go a different route, a different team with, I think, a higher upside player. This player just honestly has to lay off the, the good New Orleans food and the IG women. I think Zion Williamson is going to be first team all NBA. And I think the New Orleans Pelicans are going to be a top three seed. Oh man, yeah. that's that's like the AD one. It's like it's a big if. If Zion can stay healthy, I could definitely see it because the Pelicans are talented enough. They're they're deep on that roster. It really just does come down to Zion. And it's I think he's, he's more of an X factor than I think AD is in this situation where like the Lakers could still be good without AD. Your three your top three seed isn't happening if Zion isn't healthy, in my opinion. I agree yeah, with you. But, I agree with you. But I see I, I can see it, man. Zion, like like you said, I don't think I think the Mavs are going to be okay. I think they're going to sneak in the plan, but I don't think Luca and the Mavs are going to have a high enough seed. Where I don't think Luca and the Mavs are going to have a high enough seed where he's going to be able to get MVP consideration, like significant amount. Uh, I look at like like you said, a guy like Tatum, he would be next in line for me. Healthy, I still prefer Zion. I think Zion is just an animal in the paint over like Tatum of nature. I, if they get a top three seed, they like new people. I'm just saying, I could see it if he's out. No, no, I, I could definitely see it. Like looking at the West right now, if Zion, we, we saw how the Pelicans played when Zion was healthy that that one season. They look damn good. Like that's not a that's that's not crazy. Like them to get a top three seed. If you got Bi playing, and he getting you 24 get 24 a night. You got Zion. You got a, a veteran PG and CJ McCollum. You got Herb Jones locking up. You still got Val. They don't got Val. Do they still have Valanciunas? Yeah, I think so. I don't. I don't think he, they got rid of him. He's on his last year, last year. You got you got a solid big man. I'll, fa- I'll fact check that. And, and a healthy Zion, he was giving you twenty five a night. I think if if he is healthy, a top three seed is not is not out the case for them at all. And if you're and if you're putting resumes against who, like yeah, the Celtics might have close to sixty wins, but if the Pelicans have in the 52, yeah. 55 range and they're a top three seed in the West, it's which I think story. is tougher. It's a better it's story. Oh, look at him going. From, yeah. Look at him going from porn star to the playoffs. Like yeah. I can see it. Porn I can star see to all star. Porn star to all star. I can see it. I can see it. That's, that's not a bad. I like that. I like that's. That's not a bad take. All well, right. now that each of us got our three out of the way, um, before we end the YouTube video, um, the audience, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But do you guys have any last second um, hot takes you want to get off? Hey, ah, that was it. I was I was thinking long and hard about mine. That was that. That's it. That's all I got. Hey, I've got two more that I just want to get y'all's just your opinions on. I had it written down. I uh, didn't get to it. Um, this is kind of similar to yours, Ethan, about the Grizzlies ma- missing the playoffs. This is a team that they have a lot of question marks, in my opinion. The Warriors will miss the playoffs was one of my hot takes, because while Steph Curry is still that guy, we know he is. The rest of the guys around him are getting a lot older. They lost Jordan Poole and replaced him with Chris Paul, who we know about his injury history. We could see this being a year like it was a couple years ago, the year they drafted uh, James Wiseman, number one, because guys could go down with injury. Obviously, I hope that none of that happens right. um, just for the sake of basketball, but all of the pieces are there for something to go wrong for the Warriors and they miss the playoffs. Yeah, if, if like you said, it's a big if. But if, let's say, a, a Draymond or a Wiggins goes down, I could very well see them missing the playoffs. Of course, like if Steph goes down, they miss the playoffs regardless. But if, if they lose one of the pieces like like Draymond or Wiggins, I could very well see it. Klay Thompson, he stinks. So I don't think he makes a big difference. <laughs> so, But if, if they lose a Draymond or a Wiggins for a, a long a, a long period of time, I could very well see that unless Kaminga takes a leap. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely uh someone I didn't take. I can see, I can see Kaminga. I can see Kaminga wanting out too. Like this is really the last year for him. Like, yeah, you're he's going to have to wait your year. turn. He's, yeah. he's about to be in a contract year and he doesn't get the minutes he needs for a player that was picked where he was picked at. Like I would want out too. Like you messing with my money now. Like, of course I'm winning a few games or whatnot, but you mess with my money. Like, do I want to win or do I want to make money for my family in in the future? Give me the money every day, and I can't make no money here. Especially when he got didn't he? Doesn't he? He already have a chip. They already have a chip. 
I'm, I'm playing behind Draymond Green. Like, <laughs> seniority is always going to roll over that in, in, in the uh, world possession. It's, ask, it's, ask Jordan yeah. Poole. Ask Jordan Poole. Ask Jordan Poole. Yep. You feel me? Like, ask Jordan Poole. If I'm Kaminga, I would, I would want out too. Like, y'all y'all playing my money. I'm, I can play more than the, the short role player. Like, I can put the ball on the floor a little bit. I got more to my bag than the Warriors are letting me show. Yeah. And when you're in a team like that with Steph and Clay, those two are always going to be the focal point of the offense. Easy. And they're not the, – until they're, they're gone, like, it's not a bad thing. I mean, they've won four rings. So it's not like – it's not a bad thing for the Warriors, but it's like – they're Steph's, gone, that's what it's going to be. Steph's not taking a step back, as he shouldn't. But Clay Thompson, he stinks. And he, and he still thinks he's the same player he was five years ago. He still believes I'm not taking a back seat to anybody. And – and he won't. He 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 a shot sucker supreme, man. That's how he always will be. All right. Yeah. So uh I got one more for y'all for y'all before we close out the episode, just a general discussion. And honestly, this might not even be a hot take because I've seen a lot of people on Twitter start calling for it. But uh Ben Simmons will have a resurgence year. I think that's a take. I listen, ben Jason Simmons, easy. Ben Simmons has been one of the most polarizing players in this league for a minute. But from what I've seen in the preseason and from what we've seen in previous flashes of Ben Simmons, when he's healthy, when his mind's on the right way, he can be a dominant player. Um, So I think he's in a good position to do so in Brooklyn. Uh, They're a really good young team. And this, this might be exactly what he needs to get his career back on track. Ethan knows this. I am a Ben Simmons truther. He just, I don't know what it is. Another, another war I won. Another war I won. No, you didn't win it because he's been. <laughs> I won the, I, I, I won that war. I won that war. I, I, I think we get back to the to the old Ben Simmons where he's gonna get you 16, 8, and 7. Of course, he's in the more, a, he needs to be more doing more than that. But like I said, I think we get back to Philadelphia Ben Simmons, where he's at least. You can tell, like, okay, he's back. How need, excited are how excited are you? Because I think players like Ben Simmons can take advantage of of the playing tournament. For me, I'm so excited for the playing tournament. I think this like has really high potential for like long term when people talk about like a season basketball. Yeah. Because the way we talk about it, for example, like in soccer, right? I'm a big European soccer guy. There isn't just one trophy yeah, you have the champions league or the specific like country league that you win you also have league cups in between that they play throughout the years and when you talk about legacies of players it's not just down to oh did they win a league did they win this no because they could have also won this cup this cup you know what i'm saying and i think stuff like um like this what they're going to have this year with the nba cup i think that can potentially at least for the next generation of players really improve their legacy because a player like damian lillard or james harden right in 2023, we we'll talk about all oh, what what could they have won if they maybe changed their style. Maybe they could have won a ring, but maybe if they started this NBA Cup 10 years ago, they could have two NBA Cups under their belt. Now we're not talking as if they're just losers in that sense. Like, oh yeah, they won. They were able to win cups. They were went to tournament, but then maybe they weren't able to win the big thing. I mean, in season tournament, I, I again, I really don't see the point of it because, like, at the end, like, who's gonna care more about? the NBA championship or an in-season tournament. Like, for, for, for all we know, these teams might be sitting, they, they, they start players. Like, bro, we don't really need this in-season tournament because it's not doing it for us in, in the end. You feel me? Yeah. So, we'll, we'll, we'll but, that plays out, though. But, but then that goes to the argument of, like, well, that's not, you kind of play who you play. Like, the in-season tournament, yeah. I think it's going to – it's just like the NBA championship. Like, when it first – the NBA championship came around. I was like, oh, yeah, we won a title. Cool. But it's like it wasn't until years after years after years of people winning it and then being able to create a tradition of it that people actually give a fuck about it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's going to have to happen with the NBA, like the in-season tournament for people to care about it. Like this isn't like something I'm saying like next year or even the year after people are going to like all oh, like start adding this to resumes or accolades. This is something like 10 years down the line. Like when we're talking to our kids, our nephews about the NBA and who, which players are are good and this and that, they're going to start bringing up stats of the in-season tournament. You know what yeah. I'm saying? 
And honestly, the main reason why they're implementing the in-season tournament is to get more eyes on the beginning of the regular season. They have a hard time retaining viewers at the beginning of the season because no one really cares about it until you're late into the season getting ready to go into the playoffs. This is a way to incentivize incentivize fans to watch the first half of the season, see how the in-season tournament plays out. Um, And then my only... I guess complaint or something that they could add is just something that would affect uh, the playoffs. So if you win the NBA yeah. cup, maybe they get like, you make the playoffs. If you win the NBA tournament, like the NBA cup, like you don't see, you, see that, That's my thing though. Like, I like, I, I don't know much about the end season tournament. So like if, if whoever wins it, what do they get for winning the tournament? Like money, they get money, they get money and they get a trophy. But what's different thing, than like, what's the difference between that and NBA? T- like what you get when you win an NBA title, you get a title and you get you get money. But an but, NBA title is an NBA title. This is an in season tournament. But though. but that's what I'm saying. Why is it an NBA title? Because people have won it for so long, and they branded it as like but this is a middle of the season tournament. It's not the same. But that's what I'm saying. It's going to take. It's all about branding. Yeah. It's all about how they're going to be able to package it up in a nice sweet bow in the next couple of years. You know what I'm saying? Because like, money, like, what what is it like a million dollars? No, that's, what, that's how much you. Eat. I think each player gets like 500k if you win and if you're on the losing team okay, I think it's that's... 250k. And uh-huh. it's based on last se- last previous season seeding so like the one seed to the six everybody's involved early. Mm-hmm. They I I think that's better for like and it's one and done players. too. It's one it's one game done. Like it's not like a multiple game series. Yeah, I I think that's better for those players at the end of the bench that are on those minimum deals like okay like I get a chance to double my money for an in-season tournament. That, that's why I think it benefits the most. But, like, the, the top NBA teams, like, if, if I lose this in-season tournament, I still, I'm still i still in perfect place to win the, the, the NBA championship. Like, Yeah, but also it can be a thing where um, – it can be a thing where rivalry, in-season rivalries and stuff we have, like maybe, for example, Dallas and the Suns. Like, yeah, people might care about when they play, like, a Friday night, but they're going to care about it more. Oh, Devin exactly. Booker and Luka – when they play in this in season certain, like we don't have to wait to see those until the playoffs. Like, oh, we're gonna see this game in like the middle of of January. Bet, like, I need to see that. Like, oh, we're gonna see the Nuggets and Lakers, but like this time it's a game that matters, and it's not like Christmas Day. Bet, let me see that. You know what I'm saying? Portland and I, I, I and the Bucks. I, I, I want to see how it goes. I want to see how it goes though. It's like I said, it's gonna be something that takes a long time to to see the benefits of it. Exactly. That's what I was going to say, just to finish this off, the conversation about the in-season tournament. Um, It's the first year. I think there are going to be some things that they'll probably want to fix in the coming years. Uh, I do like the format of it, just base. Um, I'm just interested to see how long it keeps players interested, because while $500,000 is a lot of money, to some of these guys, like Jason was saying earlier, if you're a superstar player who's making thirty six million in a year, five hundred thousand is nothing. You're gonna say, "Fuck the in season tournament. I'm gonna stay healthy so that I'm ready for the playoffs." Um, but I don't know. We'll see how the NBA uh, maneuvers through it. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, give us a like, follow us on our socials. Uh, we'll also link Jason's socials down in the description if you want to go follow. Uh, he's got some uh, very good hoop knowledge. Um, but I think that you is going to be ball real ball nowhere. Real ball nowhere, Jason Collins. Boss, uh, boss, boss, boss. boss. Oh. <laughs> That's, that was insane, by the way. That was insane. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. As always, it was the young Rottweiler, Ethan Hamilton. Boop, 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 boop. And I'm Gage Sutton. Thank you for watching our NBA Hot Takes video, and we will see y'all next week.